One of the biggest limitations of Airtable is that data in separate bases cannot be linked. Now, Airtable is an amazing solution as a relational database, meaning that the information in one database can talk to itself uh, across various tables. However, this limitation that separate bases can't actually talk to each other provides a lot of struggles and problems for uh, many small business owners. So in this video, we're gonna be going into detail about the two different ways that you can solve this problem and build a workaround so that uh, you can have access to all of the data you need in your business. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help our clients to get organized and automated by building them solutions in Airtable and Zapier. In this video, as I mentioned, we're gonna be looking at probably the biggest limitation of the Airtable software, and that is that data cannot be linked between bases. So really quick, uh, rewind here, we're just gonna do a real high level of definition so that we can all be on the same page going forward. So a base in Airtable is uh, short for a database. So when you first log into Airtable, let's go ahead and jump on into my screen here. When you first log into Airtable, you will see that you've got the ability to make different bases. And this is from the dashboard. And the data inside these bases is essentially isolated to that base in particular. So if I were to click on this base, for example, I could link the data between these tables so that it's interacting. And this is really where Airtable becomes so powerful because it is a relational database solution. So this is great. However, I, have, I don't have the ability to link this data between bases. So going back to the dashboard, I cannot get the data in this base to talk to the data in this base, not directly, not through a linked connection. And the reason that this is a huge problem is many times business owners will want to offer the solution to, uh, you know, like they want to put everything in one database, which generally speaking, I highly recommend. The more data that you can put in one space, in one base, the better, because that's how you're going to be able to draw insights and, you know, you can set up those linked relationships and you can draw uh, analysis summaries from the blocks. And so all these things that we want as business owners are available when we put all the data in one space, one base. However, the part where many business owners say, hold on, I don't want that, is when we talk about the uh, limitation of the visibility. So let's jump into that base and I'll show you what I mean. So when we go to share a base with people, we have a couple of different options. So you have the share access up here in the upper right corner. When you click this, you'll see that in this case, I've shared this base with one person already. And uh, here is where we can determine the privileges of uh, the people inside the base. So there's always one owner, and that's the person who has control of the workspace. And then everybody else essentially gets added to that base. And you can add more people either by an email or by uh, giving them a direct link to the base. And when you do this, you can, you can choose their privileges or uh, you know, the permissions that they have inside. So read only is very limited. Uh, commenter means that they can comment on the records, but nothing else. Editor allows them to change the records so they can you know, actually work on the, uh, the different things inside your database. And then lastly, creator is full privileges, like admin privilege, where they can delete things and you know, uh, you know, completely wreck the base. So generally speaking, I recommend bringing people in at the editor level. Uh, so that they have the ability to work on the base. Uh, but of course, this really largely depends on your use case. However, the problem is when you give someone any of these privileges to the base, they have that level of privilege for the entire base, meaning that they don't have it just for one particular view. So if you have financial data in the same base that you have operational data, those people, even though they might not work on the finances, will be able to view the finances. And that's that's the biggest concern for most business owners that I've worked with uh, on, on these projects is that they want all that information in one place. However, they don't want everyone to be able to see how much money the business is bringing in, where that money is going, because that's kind of a high level, you know, upper management type of conversation. So the way to get around this is, effect is effectively twofold. You have, well, you have two options. One, is to not share the full visibility of the base 
with your employees and instead to just create specific views for them to see. Now there's a pro and con here. The pro is it's very easy, so they'll have access to that data and, uh, and, and they can do their parts of the uh, process with the limited access that you've given them. And so in this way, they're not actually Airtable users. Instead, they're really just going to a website and looking at data and performing a function on it. Now the limitation here, the con for this, uh, this option is that if you do this, they don't actually have the ability to edit the data. So going back to that editor privilege here, really what they're doing is getting a, a very uh, small version of read-only access. And so when you do this for them, they can't actually uh, change the data in the base. And that's a huge, huge minus for most small business owners because most business owners need the people that are uh, using the data in the base to actually change the data, right? And so most people won't go with that option. But if you have a use case where that makes sense, that is an option available for you. Now the second option is to build two bases. So effectively, you have one base that is dependent on the, uh, another base. So let's call them primary and secondary. So let's say you have a primary base and all of the data really starts there and then when certain conditions are met, very specific conditions that you set up, then you have the data from the primary base get pasted into the secondary base. Now, notice I say pasted. We will, you know, it is possible to build a Zapier integration to take that data from primary and to put it into secondary. Now, the only, the only problem there is that the data isn't really talking. So if something changes in that primary base, it's not going to be changed automatically in the secondary base. It needs to be done in that particular part. And so this is the option that most business owners will pursue in order to overcome this uh, limitation in the Airtable software. However, it does require a lot of really thoughtful planning because the secondary base is effectively being built just to perform a specific function. So for example, perhaps the primary base holds all of your uh, vital information, uh, perhaps, you know, contacts, clients, uh, how much, you know, their invoices, all the finances and everything. And then the secondary base is really built just for a specific part of operations. And so when the operation is ready to be performed, that information is passed from the primary, primary base, passed into the secondary base, not passed, but copied. And then somebody else has access to that secondary base and they're able to perform a specific function on that. And then you can even build a second Zap or integration with Zapier that then takes that information and pushes it back into the primary base once a certain, uh, you know, once a certain trigger has been met in the secondary base. So I know that this video is a lot more conceptual than most of our videos uh, and we didn't really jump into a lot of uh, tangible examples because this is really more of a planning, architecture, and strategy uh, creation uh, video. And so I hope that this helped kind of point you in the right direction if you had any questions about getting data between bases. All right, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I will include a link uh, below in the description of this video where you can set up some time and we can chat about Airtable and if it's a good fit for you. Uh, and of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give us a thumbs up. And in the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.